tonight, the United States has a new president. Now, former rivals change their tune. While the campaign is over, our work on this movement is now really just beginning. We will honor the timeless principles that our country was founded on. Liberty, freedom, free enterprise, consent of the government. Plus, I congratulate uh, Donald Trump. Well, I look forward to working with President-elect Trump. World leaders also showing support. And THV 11 figures out what the next steps are for issue six after Arkansas makes history with the passing of medical marijuana. Your news starts now. This is THV 11 News at 6. The president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. A historic, long-awaited and emotionally exhausted presidential campaign is over. The 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. As Americans get used to saying president-elect Donald Trump, Trump himself is preparing to begin his administration. He's meeting with his transition team today to go over potential cabinet appointments. Trump will take the oath of office 10 weeks from Friday. Well, several demonstrations have been staged around the country. A march planned for tonight in New York that will end in front of the Trump Tower. And now that Donald Trump is the president-elect, the question is, who will he pick for his cabinet? Rumors soaring that Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson is one of his picks for Trump's attorney general. But the governor trumped those rumors at a budget proposal press conference. Listen. Would you, would you consider serving a Trump administration? No, I'm happy. Uh, I, how's that for clarity? <laughs> And though Governor Hutchinson says no, other options for Trump's cabinet could include former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, and Ben Carson. Hillary Clinton delivered her final remarks of the presidential election after her loss to Donald Trump. Secretary Clinton spoke to supporters in New York today. Well, Clinton says this campaign has been, quote, one of the greatest honors of her life. She says the outcome is painful, but her supporters must accept it. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. Our constitutional democracy enshrines the peaceful transfer of power. Voters have legalized medical marijuana back here in Arkansas. And now the state government is at work to make it a reality. Many patients, though, wondering what is next. THV 11's Erica Ferrando has been working to answer some questions, and she joins us with more. Before we will ever actually see marijuana sold to patients in the state, there's the process of implementing it, setting up rules and regulations, approving dispensaries to start growing and selling, and that could take months. Government and health officials are hard at work to implement the legalization of medical marijuana in Arkansas. Within the next month, the five-member Medical Marijuana Commission who regulates the licensing of dispensaries will be appointed. This is a big deal. I mean, this is a big task for the state and it's not going to be an easy process. The Arkansas Department of Health hopes to start issuing registry ID cards next March. We have good examples from other states of things that have worked and things that maybe haven't worked so well for them that we can learn from. As for patients, they'll have to get a note from their doctor saying they would benefit from marijuana. That would allow them to apply for a registry ID card through the health department. Governor Hutchinson says the initial startup cost could be five to six million dollars. We've got a front load before there's any revenue stream that might come in. And so it is going to impact our budget. It's going to, it's going to require personnel and uh, we've got to move on that fairly, fairly quickly. There's a list of 17 qualifying conditions, including cancer, AIDS, Crohn's, Alzheimer's, as well as conditions causing intractable pain, severe nausea, seizures. ADH can approve other medical conditions. We'll have to set up a process for that as well as part of our rulemaking process. The drug will come in various forms. Smoke it, eat it, and then they'll have the synthetic form that you could vape. There will be 20 to 40 dispensaries to purchase from in the state with four to eight cultivation facilities. License applications for those facilities will be accepted starting June 1st. With this process, David Couch, behind issue six, expects marijuana to be ready for sale by September of next year at the latest. Because marijuana is illegal under federal law, insurance won't pay for it and it's cash only. 
The health department has created a page on its website to keep patients updated on their status with creating rules and regulations. They're also answering your questions over the phone. We'll have their number on THV11.com. All right, thank you, Erica. Meanwhile, recreational marijuana is legalized in several states. In California, Nevada, and Massachusetts, along with Maine, approved the legalization of recreational pot. California was the first state to approve medical marijuana two decades ago. Those states joined four others and the District of Columbia in the recreational marijuana movement. A similar measure is defeated in Arizona last night. Under federal law, marijuana remains illegal everywhere else. Well, it is definitely feeling a lot more like fall outside or as we get halfway through November. How long is this going to last, though, Ed? You know, it's going to last for a while. It's finally beginning to feel like fall. This is about the time of the year that we see our first average freeze. We're not going to be that cold. Let me just say that right now. We're not going to see freezing weather, but we're going to cool off, and it's going to last for a while, Dawn. It's going to be a nice stretch of fall-like weather. Unfortunately, not a lot of rain. And Normally, we could be using some rain about this time. Here's a look at the satellite perspective tonight, and it does show just mainly clear skies. A, a little high cloudiness from the subtropical jet to our south, big upper low to our southwest, pulling moisture away from us. So all in all, we're looking dry for the next several days. And with this high pressure building in, a cool night expected already down to 58, 62 in Hot Springs, 56 right now in Russellville. Your forecast, 52 as we start the day tomorrow and then 70 degrees your afternoon high. Much more on how long the cool air will hang around in a few minutes. Donald Trump's victory last night is all anyone is talking about here in Arkansas, across the country and around the world. Well, THP 11's Amanda Yeager joining us with more on this in election engagement. Amanda. Well, there was definitely a huge reaction to this win last night. Facebook and Twitter are reporting massive Election Day engagement on social media. Facebook says 115 million people worldwide generated over 1,700, 716 million likes, posts, comments, and shares related to the election yesterday. And Twitter says more than 75 million Election Day tweets sent by 3 a.m. today. Now, that's more than double the 31 million sent during the entirety of Election Day just four years ago. And many also took to social media to express how they felt about Donald Trump's victory. Here are some of the responses from our THV 11 Facebook page. Heather said, disgust, terror, shock, nausea, anxiety, through the roof, just to name a few. Brady says, you don't have to like it, but you will be forced to accept it. Gary says, in part, I don't have any regrets. President Trump brings with him experience in business, trade, and negotiations. Sharon says, in part, he is evil and he will never be my president. Definitely a lot of opinions there. Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote by a margin, and if Clinton holds out until all the votes are counted, she would be the first presidential candidate to win the popular vote but lose the election since Al Gore back in 2000. Now, when projections came out last night showing Trump winning in some key battleground states like um, Ohio and Pennsylvania, the market went into shock all the way until early this morning. At one point, Dow futures dropped nearly 800 and future trading was temporarily halted. But this morning, U.S. markets and even overseas markets seemed to stabilize, and that likely was attributed to Trump's conciliatory victory speech. But some people might wonder why was there such a shock and it's because markets don't like uncertainty. With Trump, investors are questioning his policies, his presidency and what that means for trade, immigration and taxes. And this uncertainty seems all too familiar considering what happened with the Brexit. That was another unexpected victory that led to short term market chaos. All right, thank you, Amanda. Today, the governor's focus was not on last night's elections, but our state's future. This morning, Governor Asa Hutchinson released his proposed budget plan for the new year. TSV 11's Caitlin Gardenhire was there and tells us what this means for our Kansans. The highlights, tax cuts, a new pay plan, and increased funding for foster homes. He says his new plan will set the stage for reform. I'll present a budget that is balanced, identifies savings, sets the stage for reform, and meets the most critical needs of our state. The morning after the election, Asa Governor Asa, Asa Hutchinson Asa proposed a new budget plan for the state of Arkansas. This includes higher education, mental health reform, quality assurance measures in the delivery of pre-K education, 
and a new and improved safe pay plan. The mental health reform starts with three crisis stabilization centers to help local law enforcement and first responders deal with the mentally ill. It will give them the resources they need to more effectively deal with people in need and without drawing on the resources of local jails. The budget also proposes a $50 million tax cut. Also, an increase in funding for higher education and one of the bigger proposals, foster care programs. Hutchinson says foster care numbers are growing at a rate of 20% annually. He wants the foster care budget for 2018 to be increased by $26 million and nearly $12 million in 2019. Those additional funds will translate into more workers who are better trained and more children finding a safe home. Governor Hutchinson also addressed how to fund the newly passed medical marijuana amendment. He plans to ask lawmakers to move $3 million from the rating day fund to help jumpstart the issue. He'll go into further detail about his budget plan in January. All right, Caitlin, thank you. Do you have a student in Little Rock School District? If so, then now is your chance to voice your opinion on a proposal to close several schools. Superintendent Michael Poor looking to cut around $10 million. The district is going to stop getting annual payouts from the state as a desegregation lawsuit settlement. The public is welcome to come out to voice concerns. The meeting started about 10 minutes ago. It lasts until 730 at the Dunbar Community Center on West 16th Street. We're staying with more fall like weather this week. I say we, meaning Ed Buckner, and he'll tell us if your full fall forecast is going to last. All right, plus Arkansas saw good voter turnout for this election, but how did the country do as a whole? We have details coming up. Now, weather. Loving the weather. From the crane I think it's Kia fantastic. Weather what do you think? I think it's fall-tastic. Fall-tastic? What do you think? I think there's a dime right I here. saw that. I get that first. No, I saw uh, it before I you. I saw it before you did. <laughs> you know what? Here's what's funny, folks. I threw that down there two Heads weeks ago. I threw that down there two weeks ago Heads to see tails. if anybody would notice it. It's taken them that long. <laughs> Heads or tails? <laughs> well, let's see. Tails. Oh, oh it's yours. So what do you win? Hmm? Oh, Heads the dime. dime. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which will, well, he which needs more. Tip jar he needs more. Well, you need more common sense. So, <laughs> oh, good for you. Boom. Starting you off. There's so much to talk about. The weekend's still several days away, but of course, football on a lot of people's mind. Up in Jonesboro, it's going to be a beautiful night for or afternoon for football. Look at that. 57 degrees at kickoff. New Mexico State Aggies. Hey, it's Wednesday time to honor another THV weather salutes you. Mark Cater from Monticello, Arkansas, has been observing the weather. To, uh, talking about it down in Monticello in Southeast Arkansas, letting people know what's coming. His Facebook page is uh, wonderful. He uh, is a big photographer and takes pictures of the, the outdoors. So if you're in Southeast Arkansas, I tell you what, say congratulations to Mark and, and follow him on Facebook. Mark E. Cater, our THV Weather Salutes um, honoree this evening. If you know somebody, uh, that contributes in some way, or observes, or, or wants to know more about meteorology, nominate them. You can email Twitter or Facebook me, call me, whatever you have to do. Um, let me know who they are, and we'll see if they might be selected some Wednesday in the next few weeks. Water vapor imagery show a lot of dry air moving in. This is good news. This means we're going to stay very quiet and very dry. No rain. That's the only bad thing, but no rain anytime real soon. Satellite across the state showing mainly clear skies. 55 the morning low, 68 today's high, so a little bit above average, but 68, that's doing okay. We're doing okay. 58 currently, dew point 44. The air is drying out, humidity at 60%. It's 62 in Hot Springs, 56 in Russellville, 50s to the north, and upper 50s down toward the south. So for tonight, much, much cooler air in place. 42 the overnight low with winds near calm. Tomorrow, 68 degrees, mostly sunny conditions. So another very nice day, another fall like day, a little warmer Friday, Veterans Day, but then a big cool down expected over the weekend. All right, stay with us. We're coming back with more. Tonight, the first of seven public meetings about the possible closing of four Little Rock schools. The closings are an option to make up for money from a desegregation settlement and that money running out. Well, THV 11's Winnie Wright spoke with parents outraged by this possibility. And Winnie joins us live from the Dunbar Community Center with details. Winnie? 
Dawn and Craig, I'm going to speak quietly because that meeting is actually taking place right behind me and it is a packed house and that is in part thanks to these flyers that were passed out to voters as they were leaving the Franklin Elementary School polling location. It sounds the rallying cry for parents and community members to once again stand up for Little Rock schools. It really hurts my heart to think that someone would consider that a way to solve a problem would be to get rid of a school. Dr. Anika Whitfield spent the summer defending the school district that raised her as it saw new leadership come into power. Now she's fighting again, this time to keep the elementary school in her district open. People are outraged because uh, this community in this area has tried its best to be a healthier, safe, safer neighborhood. The city of Little Rock has invested a lot of money in trying to do so by helping to uh, create things within the 12th Street corridor and so it makes no sense to any of us why the Little Rock School District wants to close any school but particularly Franklin Elementary School. The district says they need to cut 37 million dollars from the budget to make up for the loss of desegregation funding and say closing this school and the others is the way to do it. Fight if you want something and if you think it's good enough to stay where it needs to stay fight for it. Show them that you know one voice can be heard. That doesn't sit well with Franklin parent Ivy Chan. They have all these great tools here to help them on campus. They have, you know, the clinic, the health clinic. They have the dental clinic. They have the after school programs, which I'm not sure if the other schools have them or not. They have all the warm and inviting staff that work with you. They work with your children. And it's like, it's beneficial. I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense to want to close the school down. Both Ivy Chan and Dr. Whitfield prepared to take their fight to the masses all over again. But we deserve that our voice is heard, that our vote is heard, because we all pay taxes. And so this does not feel like democracy anymore. It feels like we have been taxed without representation, and we demand to be represented. Both of those women and other people that I spoke to today say there are other places in the budget that the money could be cut from besides those schools. Now you can hear all the other thoughts and opinions at tonight's first public LRSD meeting that's here at the Dunbar Community Center on West 16th Street. And you can also find those websites on our, or those comments on our website, that's THV11.com. All right, Winnie Wright, thank you much. All right, now let's send things over to Mary Dunleavy for some sports things. Mary? Oh, the high school playoffs kick off this Friday, and instead of recognizing a red zone player, we are spotlighting a red zone team of the week. Plus, the Arkansas women's basketball team drew national attention when they kneeled during the national anthem last week. Do they plan to do so again on Veterans Day for their first game? We're going to hear from the team next. My name is New tonight at 6.30, a Greenbrier mom hoping Arkansans vote to approve medical marijuana and will help bring relief to her family. We'll have more from her. Plus, a new partnership with UALR could help high school students get a guaranteed seat in furthering their education. You're watching THV 11 News at 6. A second half hour of news and weather starts now. From Arkansas's News and Information Center, this is THV 11 News at 6.30. Election results brought tears for one Greenbrier mom. For years, she has anxiously wondered if medical marijuana could be the answer to ending her daughter's seizures. And THV 11's Meredith Mitchell shares her story. For Samantha and her daughter Presley, the passing of issue six could mean giving back her quality of life. Right now, Presley takes a number of medications, but the CBD oil will be the only thing she'll need. Can you say hi to mama? For her entire life, Presley has had severe epilepsy and multiple seizures every day. I'm praying to God that this is the answer that we're looking for. Presley's mom, Samantha Smith, fell asleep Tuesday night, unsure if those prayers would be answered. Hours later, text messages started pouring in. I woke up, sat up in bed, started reading them, and cried my eyes out. It's just, you know, it's been a long road, and I've just, this is what I've been waiting for. Smith says Presley's current prescriptions help, but leave her daughter lethargic and wheelchair bound. I'm praying that this is going to help me see Presley walk and communicate. Um, not be so sedated most of the day. Um, 
It just gives me hope. She hopes Arkansas's new medical marijuana law helps. Though Smith says she's ready, there are still hoops to jump through. I'm really excited. Um, I'm ready to, I'm sure we're going to have to monitor her um, to get her off of her seizure meds. She's on four of them. Despite all the obstacles, Smith said she'll keep doing all she can because her daughter deserves it. Better quality of life. Yeah, I can only imagine. I'd, I'd love to see her playing, uh, playing with her brothers and sisters. Samantha will visit with Presley's neurologist in three months to see where they're at at actually getting a prescription for this medication. In Greenbrier, Meredith Mitchell, THV 11 News. Meredith, thank you. Smith says Presley has never tried medical marijuana before, but patients who have similar medical conditions have benefited from the medicine. Let's send things over to THV 11's Amanda Yeager with reaction to issue sixes passing. Well, as we know, issue six did pass last night. It was 53% to 47%. And some Arkansans are, of course, very happy with those results. Others, well, not so much. So here are the, some of the comments from you, our viewers, on the outcome. Holly says a step in the right direction. People need this. Changes can and will need to be made along the way. Uh, someone said I would have voted seven, but uh, they're happy for the many people who can and will benefit from this. Also, Joni saying we wanted issue seven. Cassidy said so excited. I have seizures, PTSD and severe depression and anxiety. Maybe I'll be able to be me again. Sherry said I thought six was a bad idea, but seven was OK. Too bad it was removed. And here at THB 11, we're dedicated to serving you and giving you valuable information. So we love to hear from you on issues that matter to you, whether you're for them or against them. So continue, please, letting us know what you think. And if you have any questions, send them to us and we'll do our best to get you those answers. It's our promise to you. Back to you guys. All right, Amanda, thank you. Arkansas seeing huge voter turnout for this year's election. The Secretary of State's office says nearly 1.1 million people cast ballots. There are nearly 1.8 million people registered to vote in Arkansas. The United States could be on the verge of record-setting voter turnout. Voter turnout is up 4.7% in more than half of the country. A nice fall-like day today, although temperatures, even though it might have felt a little cool to you, were actually just two degrees warmer than average. Two degrees is really nothing. Either way you look at it, we're looking okay here as we head toward the rest of the week. The only thing missing is some rain. A lot of po folks probably don't want rain, but we could use just a little bit. Here's the current temperature map. It shows that we're mainly hanging out in the middle 50s, middle and upper 50s. It's still, still 62 in Hot Springs. 53 in Arkadelphia, 53 up in Mountain Home. Your hour by hour forecast we will see temperatures kind of hold steady for a while and then drop down into the 40s, 46 by 2 a.m. What that map doesn't show you is our low tomorrow on your Thursday morning will be around 42 degrees. So plenty of cool air moving in at least briefly, then more cool air for the weekend. The rest of that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Donald Trump will be getting a lot of help from Congress after winning the White House. Thank you, Wisconsin. Republicans contested Senate races in state after state. Republicans also retain control of the House. The electorate seemed to send a clear message it is sick of Washington and wants change. Tonight was a reminder that our charge in the United States Senate is to serve you and people like you across this state and across this country. It wasn't a clean sweep for the GOP, though. Representative John Micah lost his Orlando, Florida seat after serving 12 years in Congress. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid's Nevada seat will stay in Democratic hands. Catherine Cortez Masto was able to win her matchup against Congressman Joe Heck. Well, it didn't take long for world leaders to congratulate Donald Trump in the United Kingdom. They're calling Trump's victory over Hillary Clinton a Brexit-style shock. While some leaders were happy, Iran's foreign leader or foreign minister urged Trump to respect the nuclear deal between the two countries. China's foreign ministry says they'll cooperate with Trump's administration to ensure stable relations. The results of this election watched around the world. Sure, it's like one night of sleep for us, but it's history and like we're always going to remember where we were. In Russia, President Trump's souvenirs are already being sold. President Vladimir Putin said he is ready to restore good relations with the U.S. 
Well, hope, healing, and unity, words we've heard a lot today, the day after Donald Trump became president-elect. Mixed emotions felt around our nation, and THV 11's Breesham and Perkins has thoughts as our nation looks ahead. No matter what president there is, you know, I, I think it's all going to be the same. I'm really disappointed in the results. I'm a Trump fan, have been for over 12 months. Soon, there will be a new resident at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I feel very disappointed because I was from Hillary for the start and definitely not Trump. Who didn't vote is now the question. Terry Richard, sociology professor at UALR isn't shocked at statistics. I saw some millennials come in, you know, younger uh, people, they're probably around 20, 21 years old, and uh, they looked at the line and just shook their heads and walked out. Experts say not enough millennials got out to vote, but could have drastically changed the results had they did. Arkansans who favored Trump are confident he can bring unity, hope, and healing to our nation. Historically, uh, younger adults don't vote at the same rates anyway, the same percentages as older adults who usually vote at the highest rate. About 50% of people ages 18 to 35 were projected to hit the polls. I don't think they got out to vote because they don't understand the issues or they really don't care about the issues. I think they didn't get out to vote because they didn't like Hillary or Trump and they just did it like just out of spite. As the world watched history unfold, even seasoned analysts wondered how they got the numbers so wrong. I was tossing and turning in bed having, having nightmares, you know, oh, what if Hillary is going to win? Despite the division, many are still optimistic. I hope he keeps unity within the country. He said too many nasty things. I hate the negativity that is being spread among our country. We're supposed to be united. In Little Rock, Bridgman Perkins, THV 11 News. Bridgman, thank you. And we are also encouraging you to share your thoughts with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. President Obama and the newly elected are set to meet at the White House tomorrow. President Obama and Donald Trump set to talk about plans for a smooth transition of power. The president phoned Trump early this morning to congratulate him on winning the election. The president also called Secretary Clinton and expressed admiration for the strong campaign she conducted. In other local news, a former Arkansas teacher gets a prison sentence for sexual assault. Plus, a new partnership involving UALR can help high school students have a guaranteed seat in college. We've got the details next. A uh, former Central High School, or, excuse me, a former Central Arkansas teacher is sentenced to 30 years in prison for sexually assaulting two students. 37-year-old Michael McRae pleaded guilty to first and second degree sexual assault on Monday. The charges stem from allegations dating back to 2012 and 2014 when two Anthony School students said McRae had sex with them. McRae was working at a Jacksonville school when he was arrested last November. A student at Jacksonville High School can get a jump start on making college more affordable there. The Early Commitment Program with UALR gives students a guaranteed seat in college, but there are requirements. Complete the college prep at the time of high school graduation, get at least a 19 on your ACT, and have at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA. The contract is non-binding. Students can opt to attend any school after graduation. Jacksonville Promise is open to students graduating in 2017 through 2020. If you have some concerns over some possible schools closing in the Little Rock School District, you have about an hour left to go voice those concerns. Superintendent Michael Poor is looking to cut around $10 million. The district is going to stop getting annual payouts from the state as a desegregation lawsuit settlement ends. But the public opinion meeting ends at 730 at the Dunbar Community Center on West 16th Street. Governor Asa Hutchinson proposes a $50 million cut in Arkansas's income tax. Governor Hutchinson says he'll oppose further reductions unless they're offset by closing tax exemptions or cuts in other places in the state budget, but he would not go into more detail. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that I want to spend more time on and work with the legislature on, so I'm not announcing it today, the details of that, and we'll wait. Uh, until uh, closer to the session to make that announcement. Lawmakers last year approved Hutchinson's proposed $102 million cut in the state's income tax. Governor Hutchinson's tax cut proposal wouldn't take effect until fiscal year beginning July 1st of 2018. 
Oh, we're staying in the low 70s and mid 60s for the rest of the week. Yeah, Ed Buckner has details on the cooler temperatures in his forecast. Plus, it was one of the most memorable days of Darius Hall's life here at Mills High School as he signed his national letter of intent to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We're going to bring you his story with his family in just minutes. <laughs> Who you going to throw yeah, him at? All right, you. No, you're not. Come on, we need no, a moment of relief or it's something. It's fall. Let's, let's give everybody watching out here in the weather garden the feeling of fall. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening to the leaves on the trees. They're not really changing. They're just turning brown and dying. They are. It's not pretty out yet. No. Do you think we'll get at least a week or there, so of the, the no, foliage? No. Right. The, I looked at the latest report, and it's there's a, about 35 to 40% color in some areas, and the rest of it's just turned brown and fallen. Like yeah. this. Just like that? That's crinkling. Getting right. in the way. Well, you know what? At least the temperatures are finally cooling off yes, a little bit. I'm and not complaining. It's just usually so pretty in Arkansas during those couple weeks. Not so much this time. Not so much this year. But the weather will be pretty. Lots of sunshine. Here's some football games for you. The Battle of the Ravine Saturday. How about that? OBU's going across the street. Reddy's Tigers. That's Battle right. Going across the street to Henderson State. Sunny in 64. 1 o'clock kickoff. UAPB down in Houston, Texas at TSU at 2 o'clock. 70 degrees there. UCA at home against Nichols State, sunshine and 63. Here at home right now, we're looking at mainly clear skies. Not a whole lot here going on. The nice little high pressure system is built in. The cool front has cleared through the state and we're looking pretty good. At least we're looking very much more like fall and tonight temperatures will feel like it. Right now it's 58 degrees with clear skies. Just a beautiful night. Dew points at 44, humidity at 60%. The wind northeast at six miles an hour. So everything's kind of coming together for a perfect fall evening. Already down to 51 in Harrison, 53 in Mountain Home, 56 in Russellville, 58 in the Village, 58 in Benton, 57 over in Cabot, Lone Oak, Hazen, England, and Whitehall. Again, it's been very, very dry. Haven't had a whole lot of rain. Still about 14, 15 counties under burn bans. Uh, as of today, Cleburne County has just been added to this list. So they're kind of scattered. It, the northern third of the state, no burn bans there. But again, everywhere else, it's just kind of spotty uh, burn bans in effect right now. Low temperatures tonight, well, again, as I mentioned, will be on the cool side, and that's to be expected. This is where we're supposed to be, folks. 43 tonight in Searcy, 40 in Batesville, 39 in Mountain Home. Matter of fact, speaking of that, Northeast Arkansas could see a frost on Sunday morning, the first frost of the season. Nothing like that yet for us, but Northeast Arkansas, it will be chilly this weekend. Highs tomorrow back up into the lower to middle 60s. So tonight, much cooler with a low near 42. Tomorrow I'm going with a high near 68 under mostly sunny conditions. And that extended shows a little bit of a warm up there on Veterans Day, but still not bad. And then a stronger cool down over the weekend. And there you see that 38 on Sunday morning. Stay with us. Much more to come. Just over 500 in the 2015-16 season. The Arkansas basketball team has so much promise on the way, including preseason SEC player of the year, Moses Kingsley. But there's more on the way here at Mills High School. His name is Darius Hall, and he's going to bring that 40 minutes of hell that Mike Anderson always wants. Hundreds packed into the Mills High School gym. And I remember a time where, you know, everyone was like, Day -day, you can't shoot. To support Darius Hall and his family. And he said, yes, I am. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be a hog one day. Y'all watch. All of Hall's childhood dreams came true. At first, I was taking baby steps. Now I took a grown man's step. Hall forgot his pen when signing his national letter of intent to be a Razorback. But luckily, as always, his mom came through with a backup pen. At first, I didn't play basketball, and she always pushed me to go harder. Basketball in school hasn't always come easy for the 6'6 small forward. When he came here, his grades were borderline C, and he now, last couple semesters, has made straight A's. Well, I stayed on him and stayed on him, and finally he got it. Mike Anderson plans to turn Hall into a stretch forward that can rebound and push the ball up and around the court. When you talk about that 40 minutes of pressure, that's him. He's built for that. I'm ready. It's like I can step, step foot in and go, go from there and win the national championship. Watch out. He's known for taking down basketball hoops. Yes, ma'am. They're going to have to get some backboard insurance. As Hall presses forward, his goals are high for his senior year. Undefeated season, 
uh, conference champs and state champs. And for himself as a hog. So proud of you. Today is here. And I'm very proud. I, it's, it's a blessing. I feel good, but I feel like I can be better. Hall and the Mills Comets won't waste any time. They kick off their season in just two days. Can you believe it? Friday, they will face Jacksonville right here at Mills High School. We're back after this. All right, the weather is chilly out there, but I am not complaining. No, I'm loving not either. it. Actually, the way it's supposed to be this mm -hmm. time of the year, cooling. But you're not either. You're not complaining I'm not either. Complaining. Not about the weather. I'm not complaining about it. Well, okay. then again, you might have changed things, and so let's just see if I'm going to complain. Let's. Well, no, nope, I'm no, not complaining. I, no, there's no nothing to complain about here unless not. you need to need some rain. Nothing like that. 68 nope. tomorrow, 73 Friday. Um, the weekend's looking kind of cooler, uh, cooler than it is right now. Actually, mm -hmm. 38 on Sunday morning, and as I mentioned, there could be a frost in northeast Arkansas, but nothing like that yet for here. Mm. Not just yet. Could use some rain, but yeah. now that's not a complaint. I understand. I, the talk between Ed and Craig. Oh my. Oh no, I know what I know what's complaint. <laughs> hey, we'll be back again tonight at ten. Thanks so much for watching the news yeah. always on THB eleven dot com. Thanks hey. for watching hey. THB eleven news. Stay connected to the THB Information Center twenty four seven on your mobile device and with the THB eleven app for your iPad.